Welcome. This week we talk about geometry and I want to start with a few uh, wonderful theorems about triangles uh, and there are some miracles happening here like if you have a, if you have a general triangle <clears throat> we can look at points defined by that triangle. One of the points is called the barycenter <clears throat> or the centroid. Let me just make this maybe green. <clears throat> what we do is we take the midpoints <clears throat> of the sides and then we connect with the opposite side. So the miracle is already that this is actually a point, this defines a point which we call the barycenter. <clears throat> And these are midpoints here. Now we can also look at uh, other points. What we can do is we can describe the inscribed, inscribed circle. Let me just make this red here. When we want to have the inscribed circle, we take the angle bisectors. <coughs> it's also a miracle. <laughs> Does it look like? hitting but they actually hit so these are angle bisectors <coughs> and this is called the in center <coughs> let's just call it i <coughs> then there is a, a fourth a third point is the <coughs> auto center so what we do is we draw the orthogonal perpendicular <coughs> orthogonal lines here. Let's <coughs> maybe this. Let's call this O. This is the orthocenter. <coughs> and uh, so this is these are the heights or orthogonal heights <coughs> or orthogonal <coughs> lines sort of the opposite point and then there is a fourth fourth point a fourth miracle which is the <coughs> circumcenter so if you go and want to draw the circle which passes through all these points let's make this yellow what we have to do, of course, is to just take the orthogonal uh, bisectors. So we take orthogonal bisectors. Uh, doesn't look like orthogonal bisectors here, but uh, this is these are the orthogonal. <coughs> so the orthogonal and always in the midpoint here. <coughs> doesn't look like the midpoint, but that's just this is the orthogonal. Bisectors. And uh, this is called in the circumcenter. <coughs> Just also make it yellow. <coughs> so here it's clear if you are on this line here, then you touch a circle which touches one side, touches also the other side. So here, when you actually are on this point, so you have a circle which is inscribed here. While on the other side here, if you are on this line, then if you pass through this point, you also pass through this point. So what happens is you pass through all three points and this is called the circum circumscribed circle. <clears throat> there, is a, there is a miracle happening and that's called the Euler line. <clears throat> so and that's a theorem which says that so there are already four theorems here, right? The four theorems which tell that these actually are points and not just a collection of three points. And uh, there, there's another theorem which is actually kind of kind of almost a culmination of these things, is that the barycenter, the orthocenter, and the circumcenter are all on the on, on the on the same line. <clears throat> e, O, and C are on same line. So let me just make a picture. This is kind of, you have to be lucky to have a good good picture. You need some kind of drawing program to make this really nice. But let me just try. 
Let me just try to kind of uh, get these three points here. So the bar is center is, uh, we take just take the midpoints here. <clears throat> And uh, just try not to draw too many points here. So this is the body center. <coughs> and then the ortho center is, and if we draw all the orthogonal, orthogonal lines. <coughs> and here, maybe it's here like that goes like that and hits here so that's kind of the intersection this two will actually be here let's just see whether this makes sense so this also then should be perpendicular to here yeah makes sense so maybe this is the ortho center the uh, orthogonal bisectors so we have that here just I was not, I was actually not hitting, hitting, maybe this is kind of here. So this is the, the circumcenter here. And uh, what uh, Euler kind of realized is that these three points are on a line. <clears throat> There's a line here passing, so this, this is the Euler line. Now we will all prove this using a computer algebra, you can just brute force it when you put coordinates in, general coordinates in, and that's an idea of uh, Descartes to use algebra to do this. You can also do that, uh, that's what's usually done in school, you prove this uh, using uh, methods which Euclid had at his uh, disposal, and, uh, and you, can, you can do that without, without algebra also. Uh, but it's, it's beautiful. So Okay, the second theorem is uh, Pythagoras theorem. Pythagorean theorem is probably the most important theorem in mathematics, definitely one of the most important, and also is usually ranked very high, usually even before the, the Euler, Euler line. But uh, uh, let, me just, uh, let me just describe it and uh, uh, give, a, give, give one proof. There are many, many proofs. <coughs> so we have, a, we have a right angle. That's a symmetry assumption. So we have a right angle triangle and then we have A and B and C and then the theorem is that uh, A squared plus B is equal to C squared. So that's the theorem and uh, we, can, we, can, uh, we, can, we can prove this using a, just a picture. One doesn't know how, uh, how Pythagoras was, uh, was, uh, was, was proving it. One do, is not even sure whether Pythagoras was the first one who had it. So there are also Chinese roots and other uh, mathematicians who have. So, uh, so there's a little bit of a uncertainty, but one of the pictures one can do is just draw these lines here with a, just. So what you do is you, you draw you draw lines so that you have a square inside here. <clears throat> so the triangle is actually this triangle you, you put that here. And uh, so let me just let me just uh, uh, see. And then the side here, that's the side length C, which we have. And then uh, what you do is you can rearrange these uh, things. And then we take uh, this part and we put it up here. So uh, let me just draw it again here. So, so we take this part here. Let me just make this blue here. This part. And we put it on top here. And uh, we take another uh, part away. So we take uh, this part away here. Let's take, take call it, make this red here. Also, also the same, same triangle here. We put that away here. So this I've taken away here. <coughs> and uh, this, uh, this part also has been taken away and actually placed here. So 
so that's the that's the trick to do that so that is still it's not taken away and now what we have is uh, so we have a we have a shape which uh, <clears throat> when you look at when you look at this side here because this is B here this side B is actually visible here <clears throat> This side, this is actually here. <coughs> the short side of the. <coughs> right, this is here, and uh, uh, you can you can you can see that this is actually this side here, <coughs> right? And then you pl plug that in here. So what you actually see here is when you look at this square here. This is actually just B square. The area is B square. Yellow is this side here. So this is yellow here. <coughs> so this is yellow. <coughs> this is yellow. This is yellow. But that's also yellow here. <coughs> this is this is yellow. <coughs> because originally this was the triangle here, right? So this is also yellow. So this is this line. This is square here is a, C, B, uh, a square. So we have a square plus b square is equal to c square. So a square plus b square, and then we have the c square is here. That that whole thing. <coughs> So by rearranging this, putting that blue one on top, putting the red one here, we have a, not changed the area. So the area C square is the same thing than the area A square plus B square. That's one of the proofs which might have been uh, uh, the first the first approaches, but there are other proofs which are which are natural, and we will look at uh, at some also in the in the in the lecture. <clears throat> so that's this theorem. When I started teaching this course 10 years ago, I was uh, complaining about the state of the geometry education in K-12 because what it is, it's just boring often. The theorems are just so boring, you cannot really excite. If you have a, a, a theorem, like if you have two angles are the same and also two sides are the same, this doesn't really rock the chair. What is a, a theorem which you rarely see in, 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 a, in geometry books or only in special cases is the Thales theorem. It was one of the theorems when I was in high school which really kind of made me excited about mathematics because it's not trivial. So let's just see. So we have a, we have a circle and then we make an arbitrary, uh, draw an arbitrary segment and then we can draw triangles. And one triangle, uh, possible triangle is like that and another possible triangle is like that. So the theorem tells you that these angles are the same. <clears throat> the angles are independent here. <clears throat> so uh, in, in some sense, if we have the thing, the angle, this is angle of C, is constant. So the angle alpha is constant. <clears throat> so if A and B are fixed <clears throat> for fixed. A and B. So usually this is uh, proven in the special case when uh, when you have that. Uh, so Thales was one of the first mathematicians, actually maybe the first real mathematician uh, philosopher. But in this case, this is just you know it's obvious because you have a you have a, 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 a you have a rectangle. So in this case, there is nothing which excites you about mathematics. In this case, there is something. There is a, 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 a real kind of surprise here coming in. So you have this uh, beautiful uh, invariance of, uh, uh, of, of a quantity, which, uh, and we will, we will do that. I'm not doing that here, but uh, we will do that. And actually what you can do relatively easy is to show 
that uh, this angle, this, this angle here is actually just two alpha. <coughs> this is alpha here, this is two alpha. And then, uh, and then uh, you can, uh, <coughs> you can draw some, some, uh, some, some pictures to see this. <coughs> but we will, we will do that in class. Uh, very beautiful, very beautiful theorem. <coughs> So if you are uh, aware of more interesting theorems, then uh, one can also, you can also teach <coughs> and uh, make students excited about uh, uh, geometry. The Hippocrates theorem is a, 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 an attempt for the quadrature of the circle. And it's also related to uh, Pythagoras. Actually, it follows from Pythagoras. <coughs> so you have a right angle triangle and then you have a, a circle. So. A half circle which goes through. That's of the Thales theorem actually kind of assures you that this is always then a 90 degrees here. But then there are two, you can draw two more circles. This one and uh, this one. And uh, you see now there are two uh, moon shaped figures coming up. These are called the lunes, <coughs> French for moon. <coughs> and uh, the theorem is that this area of the, of the moons is, is the same thing than the area of the triangle. <coughs> so this is T. Let's call this T, let's call this A, and let's call this B. <coughs> So that's the uh, Hippocrates theorem, which says T is equal to A plus B. <coughs> and it essentially follows from Pythagoras because this half circle area and this half circle area is the same than this R half circle area. And then you can uh, just write down a few equations and, and see that this is, this is the same thing. We will, we will work on this in the in the uh, uh, in in the workshop <coughs> uh, during during the lecture. So this is Hippocrates theorem, very beautiful theorem. So the quadrature <coughs> because this is rectangle. Uh, 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 rec this is made of lines, and this is made of circles. <coughs> Morley's theorem was unknown to me when I was in high school. I learned that only uh, maybe 15 years ago and it's now very popular. It has been exploded into uh, uh, many many books are, are covering it and there are many proofs also. <clears throat> it's actually quite challenging to find a proof. If you have never seen it and tried to find a proof it's actually quite tough. So what you do is you make an uh, angle tr trisector. So you make here at every at every of the at every of the uh, vertices you make an angle trisector <coughs> so these are angle trisectors <coughs> and then you see intersection points you see actually that they are these intersects here <coughs> This intersects here and this intersects here. And the theorem is that this triangle which, which is formed here is always an equilateral triangle. <coughs> yeah, try to prove this. <coughs> So this is alpha, 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 this is beta, 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 and this is gamma, gamma, gamma. 
try to try, try to prove this. It's it's not it's not so easy. But the proof once you see it, it's kind of nice. But that's the that's that's Morley's theorem. We will also talk about the proof in class. That's it for today. <clears throat>